Hey guys, I'm back for another video, and yeah, this is going to be, yeah, this is going to be yeah, a review for Ruby Volume 2. Yeah, so, so anyway, yeah, ranging from the fight scenes to the interactions, yeah, the food fight was an excellent stuff. To volume two. But conveniently enough, volume two is the last, the second and last volume that Monty Oom, the creator of Ruby, had worked on before his untimely death. Yeah, it's pretty tragic and pretty damn depressing. I'm not gonna lie and say it isn't. At the same time, there isn't really much else I can say in regards to that, but I just honestly hope that, that maybe, yeah, that maybe, yeah, maybe it would have been better, in a sense, that for the rest of the for the rest of the volumes, uh, if the writers and Rooster Teeth in general had just gone by a uh, what Monty chose for his own damn series, because let's be honest, let's be honest, they they basically ruined it at that point. Look, it's still good, though, like, ranging from the food fight to the to the final battle with the Grim in Breach. And believe it or not, yeah, believe it or not, you know, I actually did like the volume. Well, it shed more light on, on a Roman Torchwick and the White Fang as a whole. Plus, with Adam's first appearance, plus with Adam's first appearance since the black trailer, yeah, his first appearance since the black trailer, or at the end of volume two, it actually said something major up for the next volume. And of course, I am still an Adam fan to this day. Even though in later volumes he was treated terribly by the writers. Yeah, it was like they weren't writing a character at all. They were just making him a one-dimensional piece of shit. But to be honest, I still liked the character Adam Torres. Yeah, and of course, according to Monty, what he wanted for Adam... Adam Torres was supposed to be, you know, like, a morally gray character. And also, according to the original writing for Volume 3, however, Monty wanted Adam to be the one to tear apart Penny eh, and feel a bit of remorse, but at the same time feel really confused, I'd say. About the fact that he would have just, he would have just taken out the ascension being with an aura. Even if that was just a robot, it was still sentient regardless. And, yeah, long story short, that didn't end up happening. But anyway, back to volume two. Yeah, from the food fight to the grim battle. It was still pretty good, though. I mean, I will get more into Adam next next video when I cover Ruby Volume 3. But so far, it was a pretty good start for Adam's return. And his revenge, basically. I mean, of course, by that point, you didn't really know much about Adam. Like, who he was, or like what his backstory was. 
But yeah, apparently. Yeah. But yeah, apparently. Yeah, Cinder, Emerald, and Mercury, huh? Have uh, secretly uh, have been plotting against Team Ruby and Beacon in general. But the fact that Ram and Torchwick actually gets arrested at the end of Volume 2. Yeah, that's actually somewhat amusing. But at the same time, I've never really taken Roman Torchwick's character seriously. So, even Adam was a much more serious threat than Roman. And that's just my opinion alone. Pretty sure a few others in mind would have had that same opinion, though. I mean, I'm not gonna lie and say they wouldn't. Plus, with everything that went on in between. Then there was the Beacon Dance. There was the Beacon Dance, the mission. Then, then Breach, the finale. Coincidentally enough, though, Volumes 2, 3, and 4 all have 12 episodes each. Ironically enough, the uh, Cinder and Ruby finally have their first fight, despite the fact that, uh, that, well, it's only ever been shown in the Origins, and during their only fight, it was pretty much both in a, in costume, I'd say, if one, I'd say if one were to count, and a dress as a costume, for the most part, then, yeah, it would be in costume. But the fact that, the, that Cinder somehow manages to get away, and of course her semblance is revealed in, in Volume 2. Basically, the ability to, like, shape... Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Wait, hold on, hold on. Cinder Fall. Yeah, Cinder Fall's semblance is apparently called Scorch and Caress. Yeah, Scorch and Caress is, is Cinder's semblance. And she can shape shit. With, she can shape different things with the uh, Yeah, Scourge and Caress allows Cinder to superheat objects and manipulate their shape. Which makes sense, considering the fact that she first uses her semblance in front of Ruby? During, uh, during Cinder's fight with Ruby in Volume 2? As Cinder's uh, infiltrated... And a beacon tower. Where she turned, well, she condensed dust into glass with Scourge and Caress. Believe it or not, there is still. Oh. Believe it or not, there is still a lot more to cover in the future about Cinder in general. But yeah, so far in volumes one and two so far in volumes one and two uh, Well of course volume one featured not that much of a but Cinder she only made two appearances of one in the one in the first episode of the season and uh, the other in the last episode of the season. But Volume 2 features her more frequently. Yeah, so by Volume 2, they're secretly planning something even bigger. According to a friend of mine, you know, she thought she had noticed, like, a string in Cinder's hand 
even though, yeah, it could have been a threat, but I highly doubt it. I mean, unless she was, in fact, uh, working on her stealth suit for the for the infiltration of Beacon Tower and her fight against Ruby. Yeah, Scorching Caress. Scorching Caress is literally one of the most unpredictable semblances I have seen so far. But at the same time, there isn't really much else to say in regards to that. So, um, yeah. Yeah, long story short. Long story short. Cinder is still the shady and mysterious individual. Well, even to this day, her backstory is still unknown. The backstory is still going to be pretty important, though. And I honestly hope that we get her backstory in the future. Yeah, so that we don't feel like we've missed anything. I mean, sure, her motives are that she wants power. She wants to be feared, but not much else. I mean, sure, sure later on she wants revenge, but I'll get more into that in Volumes 3 and 4. Which will be the next two videos. And with this in mind, yeah. Yeah, overall, overall, I did enjoy Volume 2. It was one of the best ones, and unfortunately, the last one he worked on for his own show before he unfortunately passed away. Yeah, it's still pretty depressing. And who would have thought that? But Ruby could change so drastically after one person's death. Now with this in mind, please be sure to give this a like if you enjoyed it. Comment down below and let me know what you think. Subscribe and click the bell for notifications. So I was doing so will help the dying channel out. And uh, leave your questions in the comment section down below. Once I get enough questions, then I can do the video. And with that in mind, I mean, with that being said, remember, if today was not a good day, tomorrow could always be better. Take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Have yourselves a good one. As always, no matter what time you're watching these videos, have a good day, afternoon, evening, or night, or whatever time you're watching these videos. I will see you guys tomorrow in the next video. Bye for now.